Finally, it's here, the Sony A95L, the 77 inch, of course, fantastic OLED TV, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Are we gonna take down the 150 inch and put this up in its place? No, we are not. We are not gonna do this. Let's unbox and I'll explain. Sounds good. Okay, this TV is clearly not big enough for our living room. We have a 150 inch screen. We've had all the way as small as an 83 inch in here. Then we had 100 inch TVs, then 120 inch projectors, and even this 150 inch. And having this up here is like having four of those 77 inch TVs. So it's just not gonna cut it. So what we're gonna do is actually take this TV and replace our 65 inch in the bedroom because that is an awesome TV, but it's just a little bit too far away for me and my bad eyesight. Okay, your bad eyesight. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the reason we need to replace this. Yes. No, but this is fantastic. But is it gonna be that much better than the 65 inch A90J? That was also a Master Series OLED, but 77 inch. This may be brighter, it may be better at upscaling, it may be better at motion. So there's all these different things. And we're gonna go over all that in this unboxing and review. So stick around to the end of the video because we'll show you how big of an upgrade a 77 inch TV is over a 65. Something that's really challenging unless you can like visualize it on screen and we're gonna show you that. You ready to do this? Let's go. All right. Okay, Ooh, got the legs. All kinds of stuff up here. Yeah. One of the things I didn't like about the TV last year, the A95K, was the stand. It was like kind of a big L-shaped thing that was like uh, you could have it forward yeah, or backwards. it was really heavy. It was extremely heavy. Did we put that one on backwards? No, we put it on facing back <laughs> and then we showed it both ways. But I just, for me, having a TV on a stand, yeah. just put it on feet, man. It was unwieldy. Yeah, yeah. it was weird. Looks like we've got some cover plates here. Let's see, oh, what do we have here? Is this a camera? It sure is. <gasps> Ew. Yeah, they have a Sony Bravia cam. A lot of people don't really want a camera on their TV, but you know, I'll bedroom. take it. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably not gonna make it. Yeah. <laughs> We're not that kind of couple. Yeah, okay, and then we've got our remote and all that kind of good oh, stuff. My bad, I just the, took it from you. The install guide. All right, let's get this stuff out of the way here. You wanna pop this? Yeah, we're gonna have to just lift it over the top. These mm -hmm. small TVs, yeah. they, they don't have an opening. I can already hear all the comments of people saying, small TV, these guys are crazy. We're all a little crazy. Small is relative. Yeah, that's what she said. Protective panel here. Not much over the screen. It's very thin. It's weird, the back is protected better than the front. Another piece of plastic for the back here. We'll just move this aside for now. And uh, I guess we can put the feet on. I'll pull like one of the plastics off and you can Okay, you want to put that on? I got, got it, that? I got the TV. Okay, so we have the feet on. They're interesting. They kind of angle in the front and the back and the screws didn't go in that well. They kind of feel like they should sink in further. So it has me feeling like they're not on all the way. Uh, but let's get this set up. We're gonna not have them on the feet anyways. We're gonna put it on a mount. So let's stand this up so we can kind of show them the back and everything. What do you think? Sounds good, let's go. Awesome. Do you wanna lift it up and set it forward? Yeah. Are you on the end? One, yep. two, three. There we go. So you ready to lift this up, Jen? Yeah, let's go. This is so much lighter than some of these other I TVs. I know, way lighter. But I still am nervous. Ready? Okay, one, one, two, two three. three. All right. Let's get this plastic off so we can see this thing. I'm gonna go around the other side and unstick. Nope, there we I go. can. I was thinking about helping you, but I figured this is the fun part for you. I thought so you liked just it. It's more fun to watch me struggle. Yeah. So one thing that I noticed is that there is a little bit of like film around the edges of the screen. I think when you, when you, some of these QD OLEDs, when you uh, wrap them up, I don't know what it, what happens if it's an anti-reflective coating layer. If you can see it right there, it's just, it's something that's on the screen because of that plastic. And I can't necessarily just rub off that or like clean it. It's just stuck there, right? We'll have to see if we can get it with a rag later. But let's check out the back. As I said, this is a very light TV and you can see it's a very thin TV, which is 
the cause for that lightness. We have a very small and low 300 by 300 millimeter pattern right there. It's pretty standard for Sony. Um, but it's very low on the TV, so when you compare it to a lot of other ones, if you're replacing a mount for a mount, you know, it's in a different spot than like Sony, LG, all that. Uh, you see the narrow foot standing there, feet standing, and then we have the HDMI cords and all that on this side. You do have that center speaker in on top, so you can connect this to any sort of stereo and use this as your center channel, which is pretty cool. And then down further, you have some USB uh, on off mic switch. And then you have that center speaker in where you can connect it to a Sony soundbar, which is what we're gonna do upstairs. And I love that. And then you have four HDMIs below, including two that are 4K at 120, the HDMI 2.1s. And then you have that ARC eARC there. And then you have the LAN port remote for IR blasters and the cable antenna and ATSC 3.0 tuner. And then, as I said, you just have a cover that goes over all that. And then you have, you know, speakers here. You have a couple of ports. So obviously the speakers are probably halfway decent. Cool overall design. And then that Sony camera connects right there. I don't think we're probably gonna use it up in the bedroom. However, it's there if people want it, I guess, right? Yeah. Okay. So now we're gonna take this TV and put it up on the wall and replace the 65 inch. So that's all we're doing down here. So let's get up there and do that. Set it down right here. Awesome. Okay, so we're up here in the bedroom, got the 65 inch A90J that we're gonna replace. We also have the A7000 soundbar, which is why I like this pairing. And over here we got the 77 inch A95L. And so what we have to do is take the A90J off so that we can use the brackets and put them on the A95L. And because the brackets are gonna to have to be moved to a different TV, different area, it's gonna require us to take the TV mount down and lower it in order for us to achieve where we wanna be. This is a little too high anyways for the A90J. Then we're gonna hang that up and get a good look at it after the fact. Now I've tried this before with a couple of different TVs. We did have a couple Samsungs in here. The first QD OLED was the same size and so I didn't feel like it was the upgrade I was looking for because the TV wasn't larger. Then we had a bigger Samsung and I loved it but the problem was I couldn't dim it. So I can't really fault the TV for being too bright but that's what the S95C was. And then we had the A80K from Sony, which was a 77 inch, but for some reason the speaker connection wouldn't work. We ended up taking that back and it wasn't very bright as well on its max brightness. So now here we are with the 77 inch A95L and I'm hoping that that one will be the TV that replaces this A90J 65 inch because it's bigger and supposedly better. So let's see how it looks. Okay, so I'm back here, we've had a week to look at this new TV, and I have to admit, it's really awesome. I think both the size difference and the quality difference is noticeable. Uh, obviously, the size difference is pretty straightforward, as we just showed you all the different clips of the larger 77-inch TVs that replace the 65s. That wasn't the issue. The 77-inch size is definitely what would be good for this room. I like how it looks with the sound bar and the stand underneath it. It just seems like the right distance when it's 12 to 14 feet from where you're viewing it. The 65 just seemed like it was a little bit small to read text when watching sports or news or any other programming. So definitely like the upgrade in size. And I think that's one of the main things to think about when you're gonna spend a lot of money on a new TV. Now this wasn't the fastest TV to set up in the world. That can be good or bad. Uh, a lot of different menus and registrations and do you want this setting up or down or you know, how do you wanna set this TV up? What apps you need, all that. So it takes a little bit of time. And once we got it set up, it just didn't look very bright. Now I didn't panic. I knew that there were some settings that needed to be adjusted. And I went in and found the power saving mode and turned that off but it still didn't look as bright as I knew it would be. But I just knew there had to be more settings. So we went into the Eco dashboard and then finally found that the ambient light setting was still on. And once we were able to turn that off, then it slowly got up to full brightness and there was a massive difference before and after that. So it just goes to show, no matter what TV you have, make sure that you get all of those power saving settings turned off before you say, oh, this TV isn't as bright as I thought it was 
because that really makes a difference and most people can't find those and that's kind of why reviewers talk about that stuff ahead of time and because we want to review this at full brightness and make sure that it is as good as we say it is. Now getting back to the home screen, the Google TV operating system looks pretty much the same as it has for the last couple years. I'm a big fan and of course it has pretty much every app you can think of downloadable from the Play Store and you know the only difference that I really notice is that the menu systems that are Sony related, not necessarily Google TV related, look a little different. They're just refreshed a little bit. I do like how they look. It's just gonna take me a little bit of time to get used to all of them and figure out where they all are, get the uh, pop-up menus in order. You can customize that kind of stuff. It's pretty straightforward. And once I got YouTube TV on, check out some football highlights. I definitely noticed that this TV looks very sharp and very detailed. Um, the brightness difference is also noticeable, but again, I'm coming from the A90J Master Series OLED, so it already looked really good. And I think the most noticeable difference is really the size and how this A95L keeps the same sharpness and upscaling abilities at a larger size at 77 inch and probably looks even better than the A90J 65 inch. So I'm a big fan of this TV so far watching this sort of sports. I haven't significantly changed the motion interpolation or the detail settings to you know artificially make this look better, but it already looks as good as the A90J or better and I'm pretty pleased. And this shouldn't surprise you, but when I was watching the basketball game on my phone last night and Jen was watching a holiday Christmas movie, of course, and I noticed that it didn't look is sharp on my phone, which is obvious. But when I put it up on the 77 inch A95L, once she fell asleep, there was a huge difference. And I think I just hadn't noticed that from my phone to the 65 inch before because the size and distance wasn't as dramatic. But now that we have the 77 inch up, and it's brighter and it's sharper. It was just like no contest. Why was I watching it on my phone? Definitely an improvement from the A90J in size and quality. But sports aside, watching movies is probably gonna be the thing that is done with this TV the most because it just looks amazing up here. Obviously it is one of the best TVs in the world. So we definitely watched a few different movies. We did watch the movie Luca a little bit here just to check it out in comparison to some of the other TVs we've seen. Obviously with this high end QD OLED, the highlights were amazing, a lot better than some of the other LED TVs and OLED TVs that we've checked it out on. Now we did have to adjust the ISO a lot on the camera when watching this because Luca has just got really dark scenes and really bright scenes and as good as this Sony FX3 camera is, it just can't capture the full dynamic range of this TV. So, you know, bright highlights, we just really had to adjust them in order to see everything so it didn't look overexposed. And then in the dark scenes, you really get a lot of detail with a movie like this. And we did decide to buy the movie Oppenheimer here over the Thanksgiving break. And, you know, it took us four nights to watch it, but that's pretty standard for us as a couple and trying to watch a movie with two kids and a busy schedule. But overall, I thought the movie looked really good. Couple scenes, obviously, that are incredibly bright and you know colorful, but for the most part, it's just got a lot of like even detail. The TV has really no flaws. I think that when you're looking at skin tones, it's very even. It's exactly how you'd think it should look, as was the A90J, but just smaller again and just not quite as bright as this. I think really the moral of the story is the A95L just looks exactly as you'd expect it to look. There really aren't any significant downsides to this TV. Very bright, very detailed. It's a large screen, bigger, brighter, better. And I was coming from a really good TV in the A90J. So if you haven't upgraded your TV in a while and you're gonna get the A95L, trust me, you're gonna be really happy. So the factors for me to keep this TV as opposed to other ones that we've tried in its place, you know, are the brightness, the size, and the connectivity. And with regards to the connectivity, I was able to get my Sony headphones. I have the XM4 over the ear headphones for at night. Worked perfectly. I was able to connect them. Um, when you turn them on, it pops right on and connects. When I turn them off, it goes back to the audio system. Fantastic. And the same thing goes for connecting it to a Sony soundbar. I have that A7000, which is really awesome and I like it. It pairs even better with a Sony OLED. So when you connect that S Center out, 
to the TV, you get the TV acting as part of the center channel and it just raises the height. And just be careful that you gotta make sure you have it all connected properly, e arc to e arc on the sound bar out to the input on the TV, which works fantastically and you get a lot of communication and the volume and stuff works on screen along with some of the on-screen menu systems from a Sony TV. And then make sure you connect that 3.5 to the S center out because there is an audio input on the sound bar that looks very similar. So just make sure you have it all set up correctly. But the point with that is, is that it sounds way better when you have the A7000 connected. I really like the system. I have the sub and the rears and everything. So really cool little home theater in the bedroom. And then lastly is the size and the quality. And yes, I've had a couple different TVs in here, as I said before, but this Sony A95L has a very even picture quality. It's very bright. It looks calibrated and I haven't even got it calibrated yet. The skin tones, the detail level, it looks fantastic in Dolby Vision or in regular SDR. And again, the size is the big thing. So if you're upgrading, I definitely recommend you upgrade size first and then quality. Uh, obviously quality helps, but this TV looks amazing in both. I think it's a fantastic upgrade for most people. The A90J to the A95L may not be the most significant thing ever. And of course, there is an A80L that a lot of people like too. So a couple different Sony OLEDs that look fantastic. But the A95 is definitely the top dog. It's not surprising that this won almost all of the TV shootouts this year. Very awesome TV. And we're gonna have the links in the description below so you can check it out. And also the Be The Installer TV quiz. So if you're looking for a TV for your needs, check out the quiz in the description below. And if you have any comments or questions, let me know. We may be able to do a more in-depth detailed review on this TV, uh, but I always like your guys' comments and questions. So definitely do that below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you guys on the next one.